come back. Um, we're back on the boat as always. Um, and we're pepping to go out again. Now, this wasn't actually the video that I planned on making. This was going to be a video for like three weeks' time. But, um, yeah, the GoPro, in its infinite ability and wisdom, um, corrupted the memory card. So I think this GoPro's on its, uh, on its last legs on its way out. So I've ordered a, a, a replacement. I'm going to try DJI Action this time and uh, see if that's any good. Um, but, yeah, um, for now, we're just going to... Uh, as you can probably hear the radio's going nuts uh, all the sailboats are going out I think there's a, there's a race or a gatter or something on so there's a, a good 20 so sailboats heading out but we're going to get out and we're going to head up to Hull um, up to the bridge because we've not been up there for a while uh, we're going to just have a quick mess around in the water we've got two hours the lock is broken again so we're closing it at high water at, at 12 o'clock so we're going to try and uh, get out get up to Hull and get back in two hours hopefully um, yeah. So I've fiddled with my tankage a bit, little bit. So this tank is full, and I think this is the mid tank. So that should now be running the starboard engine. That is half full, which shouldn't be being used at all. And the port engine should be running off this tank, which is three quarters. Full. So I'm hoping that I've got my tankage right. But we'll have to watch the uh, we'll have to watch the gauges and see what we do. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, you can see there's a sailboat here and there and then one there gone and there's one that was normally here that's gone. So yeah, lots of sailboats uh, prepping to head out and we'll be heading that way soon. So we'll see you, uh, see you when we're heading out. So Emsie's just taking the lines off. She's going to do the, uh, I've taken all the spring lines off. So she's going to do Ems mid first. Right, so she's going to take the mid off. I've got my thrusters ready because when she releases the bow line, uh, the wind is blowing us onto the boat next door. So I'll just use I'll just use the thrusters to uh, keep us in. So she's just sorting that work rope up and she'll throw it over the top. It was underneath the rope for the boats next door, so it was a little bit knotted. Just throw it over. There we go. So now we free at the front. She's just going to uh, take us off at the back. And then we're going to head out. All our other lines and cables are off, services, etc. I've already uh, done them. Come on. Yes. Come on. There you go. Come and take this from me. I don't have enough hands. Just come and take this. No, you're fine. Don't worry. Right, so now we're gonna go. So I'm just using my thrusters to take me around. I could use the engines, I suppose. But thrusters are more fun. Fish dot, fish dot, wild rose, wild rose, over. Wild Rose, uh, can we head out of the marina and go through the locks? Over. Can we fish 
Sailboats out. So this distance. But we're gonna go we're gonna go behind all the uh, all the sailboats and then we're gonna cut across and head up towards Hull. It's, um, yeah, it is fairly windy out here actually, but it's not too bad. Right, we'll talk, send off. Send off, okay. Yeah, that's a pilot launch, look at that one coming in fast. Ems is just bringing the fenders in, she's tied the rope here so it doesn't come off the front cleat at the front. I don't get sailing, I must admit. The thought of doing six knots is not exciting. I mean, I'm on tick over and I'm doing faster than they can flat out with this full sail up. And it's, uh, yeah, I, d I just don't get it, I'm afraid. I'm sure it's lovely and relaxing, but I find the sound of a diesel engine much more relaxing. <laughs> hoping as we turn it puts the wind instead of being on our bow kind of on our on our bum um, or at least in the big quarter just because when it's on the bow it's you're constantly fighting to keep you in a straight line whereas if it's on my bum it'll be less of a bottom for me so yeah so that's how a lot of little sailboats look There's a little motor cruiser over there, but we hardly ever see him move out the marina. This is like the first time, so I'm assuming that he's coming out on marshalling duties. But yeah, at some point, all these sailboats will get to the same place, they'll align with each other, they'll point themselves all in the same direction, and then they'll be gone um, as fast as slow ass sailboats go. Mm. In the meantime, we are going to head away from them. Despite the fact that the camera makes it look really flat, there is actually quite a big swell because the wind is coming from almost directly east at the moment. Um, so it's coming straight up the river, it's coming with the tide, so it's given us quite a lot of swell going up the river. Not bad, but it's uh, bigger than it looks on the camera. I think quite a lot of YouTubers, I think, where well, I've been watching them, it's the camera, particularly these wide angle GoPro lenses make things look a lot calmer than they really are but um yeah right so we're gonna 
turn a bit now. I guess the boats all heading this direction, so I guess they're going uh, against the tide and towards the sea. So, yeah, we're just going to uh, head up on, pick up the North Channel, and then we're going to follow the North Channel across to Hull. Um, so, assuming that Emsie's holding on, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get a bit more speed on, on the go. Um, So this is a very bow high bow. Um, so I'm just going to um, trim it down a bit, put the bow in. I'm assuming our uh, speed meter wheel thing is a, a little bit caked in weed and stuff because it's saying that we are only doing nine knots and at 1500 rpm I know that's close to 17 so um, I'm, I'm guessing we're a little bit fouled up we're not actually on the plane yet though so let's push on up another uh, waypoint So our port engine is definitely lower on oil pressure than the starboard. The port's reading about 65, 70 psi. The starboard's reading about 80, 85 maybe. So I um, don't know what was causing that. I'm guessing the engines are well overdue in a year's service. So I'm guessing it's probably just not much oil in the engine. It needs a bit, bit of a top up. But that's fine. We're charging okay. One's a 13 and a half volts, the other one's at 13 volts, so we're good on the alternators. Um, we've got loads of fuel on board, even though I've got no idea which tanks are being used because my port tank is still reading off the gauge full, despite the fact that I should be running on that, but yeah, never. This is how nice and calm it is. Look, Mum, no hands. <laughs> Uh, we are doing apparently 16 knots. I'm fairly sure, considering how high that is up in the air, um, even though I've actually trimmed it down a bit, um, we are going considerably faster than that. I reckon we're doing close to 20. Um, but I'm going to just push on in a minute and uh, not try and set any land speed records because I've been much faster in Sally Jane. But um, I do want to try and get this thing up a little bit faster because the faster I've ever had it is like 26 knots and it should be capable of like 34 and today seems like a, a reasonable day to attempt that so I'm going to put the camera down or give it back to Emma or something and then I'm going to uh, give it a blitz Outward bound, 1 POV, I'm keeping south of the Lancashire south of the theatre knots according to my little paddle wheel through the water um, but I've got a speed over ground of 26 knots um, I'm on the flood tide and I'm going with the flood so I'm going with the tide obviously that's why my speed through the water is slower because the tide's running with me and what that means is you have six knots worth of tide and today is only a six and a half meter springs tide so it's actually in the scheme of things a relatively small tide for the Humber we will get up well most of the time it's in the sevens on the springs uh, but we do quite often see eights at least every month or two uh, eights eight and a half so i think eight eight point eight or something was the highest i'd ever seen um, on the big springs when it had also been raining heavily uh, a year or so ago so we do have a massive tidal range and it moves fast 
the last thing you want to do is fall in. And as no doubt the camera isn't showing at the moment, we're currently going through, despite looking flat calm, an area, area of chop. So because the Humber is dredged so often and dumped and piled to keep two major shipping channels open, um, what we do have with the change of the river, the change, rapid change in depth and the speed of it, we do have quite a lot of um, areas where you just randomly get eddies and swirls and uh, chop basically. Like if the river will be flat calm and all of a sudden you'll be in metre high rollers and it's just like, it's ridiculous. So even if you're experienced on the Humber, it can always be a daunting little river to come up. Um, so make sure you do your research, make sure your charts are always fully up to date um, because we do have a, a good chuckle of people who get stuck on the sandbanks because they haven't updated the charts. The charts are free of course on the um, ABP website for the Humber. Um, so you just get on the internet and uh, go and download those in PDFs, print them out or at least update your own charts by hand from them. Um, the river is surveyed very regularly, in fact almost constantly cycling, but I think the chart life duration is about three months, so if you, um, if you stick to stick to that, I'll make sure that you update updated your charts. We're running, for, running until 11 in one direction, because we went out just after 10, uh, so we're running... Yeah. So we're, we're running out in one, in one direction with the uh, with the tide for an hour, well just under an hour and then we're going to run against, we're going to punch against the tide uh, for the way back so even at 26 knots we'll only be doing 18, 19 because uh, of the water flow. So that gives us until just over an hour to get back before they close the lock gates at 12ish. He did say it'd be just after 12 when we close the gates, but I want to make sure that we're back for about 12-ish. Um, because, to be honest, I don't want to lock this big beast through there. It's, uh, there's no risers or floating pontoon or anything. It's just you and uh, stone sides. So, yeah, not, not a fan. Turns out that even at 26 knots, don't have enough speed to uh, get to the bridge and back in the two hour window we're allowed, which is crap because I've not been to the bridge in ages, not even been up as far as Hull since the Jubilee last summer. <coughs> so, yeah, I was kind of looking forward to uh, getting a bigger run out, but we'll go as far as we can. I think we'll make it as far as Paul. reason this boat just doesn't feel as fast, it doesn't feel like it covers the ground as fast as Sally Jane, despite the fact that we're going faster than I would have been cruising in Sally Jane, Sally Jane had cruised at 23 knots and now I'm cruising at 25, but uh, yeah, I just, it just doesn't feel as fast, maybe it's just the size, it does feel less stable though to me, it's much more affected by wind, it's got fucking horrible windage, so anyone considering S43, be aware, um, it's windage is horrible. It's bow risers, you're trying to get it on the plane, it's 16 miles, it literally lifts that bow about 10 foot in the air. So you can't even see uh, see what you really have to trim down, whereas on SJ I never had to bother with trim at all. It just did what I wanted it to do, held itself nice and stable. So yeah, there's a... Uh, it's not as comfortable a boat, I don't think, to, to drive as Sally Jane. It's more involved, which is funny because the boat this size, you expect this is a mile munching cruiser. You know, you sit it at this speed and you just let it go, but the slightest bit of beam on wind or beam on tide, and you actually have to genuinely fight with the boat to keep it where you're going, otherwise it wants to dip its shoulder in the water or spin its arse around in the wrong direction. And, uh, yeah, it, it's... I don't know if it's endemic to all bigger boats, so if any of you guys own a bigger boat, uh, let, particularly a plane boat, obviously not a displacement, let me know what yours is like uh, in, down in the comments. But yeah, for me this is, it, it's less comfortable for, for me. Um, I 
think maybe it's just a case that I've not got the hours on it that I did with uh, Sally Jane. But, yeah. So, a couple of sea tanks just uh, sitting chilling. I'm assuming they're waiting for a boat either to come in or head out. And then they'll end. Sea tanks. Yeah, a couple of sea tanks just chilling. Yeah, they'll either be waiting for a boat to come in or waiting for one to head out to be taken. I think they are actually moving just really slowly. Yeah, they're not under high power. Because those things, when they're moving fast, will uh, really kick up a wake. Yeah, they're waiting for someone coming in or going out. <coughs> they're pulling along the slow. Well, the usual tree trunks are in the river, just past one. To be fair, I am quite close to the shallows. I should probably be a little bit more further out. Not, not too bad. Right, I'm going to spin it round here then. We're going to head back because it's like 10 to. So, yeah, and we're going to fight the tide on the way back, so I'll spin it round here. We made it up as far as Paul. It's not bad. Paul. <laughs> Spin it round and re reverse our course. I'm just going to spin it round this boy here. Right, hold on, I'm going to stick it over. chase to some sea tanks. To be fair, we'll get past them really quickly. So the next way we go past will be our own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been one, so that's ours. God, this boat is fucking horrible in beam on weights. We're through it now, I think. Oh, interesting. It seems like we're still draining the one fucking tank that we don't want to be draining. That one's hardly moved and that one's not moving at all. But everything seems to still be coming out of that top tank, so I have no idea. So anyway, we are now doing 21 knots and our speed over ground according to GPS matches almost identically. The uh, speed through the water, so our speed through the water is 21.2, our speed over ground is 23.24. So, I know my uh, speed little speed paddle isn't uh, isn't third up and full of crap. So now we're just approaching these uh, sea tanks, which means we're going to have some horrible weight to deal with for them again as well. Back 
go a bit wider, see if we can hit it at a bit of an angle rather than straight through, because this boat is just fucking terrible. I don't know, a lot of people said that this boat was amazing, but rudders and shafts instead of outdrives, not a massive fan. Beam on and certainly with beam on and certainly with windage, it's just not very nice. I need to get out and try some other 45, 50 footers, see what they're like in not even bad conditions, these conditions are absolutely perfect. And Sally Jane I'd have been all over the place, but yeah, just this boat is just difficult. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it, it is just difficult. Anyway, we'll get ourselves down, we'll get back in and then we'll get Berth. Now Berth will be fun because uh, easily wind pushes me onto the boat next two hours. Um, so yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to deal with that. It was only two of us, so I don't know how we're going to deal with that. But he has his fenders out, I'll see a couple of fenders out. Um, and hopefully, if we're going to touch, we'll touch up the fenders. Um, but I'm hoping that I can go past the berth uh, and then reverse in that way. But the problem is, is that it's, uh, as soon as I spin the boat round, I'll be beam on to the wind and as I said, windage. It won't take much before we are moving faster than my thrusters can go towards his boat. So, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll work it out. I can't hear you. I'm hoping the uh, dead cat on the mic means that you guys can't hear the wind. But it is between the engines and the sea and the wind. You can't really hear anyone, even when she's sat fucking two meters away from me. idea of moving the boat somewhere else. Uh, we're moving house and moving further south. It's about an extra half an hour to where the boat currently is, so an hour and a half from coast now, which isn't bad. But between the uh, state of this river always being choppy as shit and not actually not always been a nice day out, and the locks always been broken, and the water not being water that you know you don't really want to go away on anchor somewhere, anchor up and get paddleboard out or go for a swim. Um, I mean, even in the middle of summer, North East Coast, let's face it, it's cold as shit. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm toying with moving somewhere else. The leading contenders at the moment for me are uh, Conway in uh, North Wales. Uh, I think the, the kind of Irish Sea area and Bristol Bay and everything, it looks really nice. Blue Waters and uh, the guy I follow on Instagram uh, got a predator. 50 I think it is, um, 55 Evo maybe, um, and it has a jet ski on the back and it looks amazing, it, it looks uh, really clean water, people are in the water, <coughs> there's lots of places to go and anchor and just veg out for the day, so uh, yeah it looks really good, um, so was that, and then obviously the other big one is the south coast put it in maybe Southampton or Poole, something like that. Um, and then that opens up the Isle of Wight, the Hamble, uh, all around the coast. You might uh, go Bournemouth, Dover that way and up, up the Thames, or you can go uh, Dartmouth, Torquay, um, you know, Cornwall way, uh, and make a weekend of it. And I, I have to say, from watching, again, other YouTube videos, 
the weather out there, there's a lot more times that they could go and use their boat as opposed to like us. There's quite there's more times that we can't use the boat because the weather's too bad. It's too windy or the gates have broken on the lock or there's just some shit that gets in the way of moving it for us. So yeah, uh, again, if you've got your boat first anywhere, uh, obviously not up north or certainly not up but you know, let me know what's it like where you are. Is it permanent? Uh, is it permanent tidal? Can you come and go at any state? Or have you got to lock in and out? What's the lock like? Does it work? Would be a, a, a big question. Um, you know, what is it to do in the area that you're in? Is it just go around and mess about on the water? Or is there places to go, little bays to go, or beaches to go where you can go and anchor and have lunch, mess around in the water and go back later? Or, you know, just... Uh, just tell me what it's like, give me some, uh, give me some information. It's the only stuff I've seen so far is basically watching all the YouTube videos. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're lucky that we've had almost, not quite two weekends on the bounce, but two weekends within a month that we've been able to go out and hopefully we're going out again next week because we've got some more guests coming up. So yeah, I'm hoping that we get, to get a few good weekends of using the boat, but tide will tell, I guess. <laughs> what? wave warning in effect. Yeah, no thanks, I'm freezing. So, yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> well, it's the south coast, got 30 degrees danger to life weather warnings. We've got 20 degrees of thunderstorm warnings. And actually it's getting cloudy, so it wouldn't surprise me if, if, if this afternoon it does become thunderstorms. But it's cold. Easterly winds, though, it's still coming. Yeah, well, the south coast has got the wind. The, yeah, the south coast has got the winds coming up from Spain. What we've got is the winds coming across from like Norway and shit still. So it's still cold. Yeah, so it's still cold as hell. I've not seen any seals or dolphins. There was a there was a seal in Hull sunbathing on the Oswash. <laughs> really getting up. What? I say it can't be Ava Grace, they've broke. What? Ava Grace is broken. Uh, watch his latest video, his fuel tank, he's, he's got to replace one of the fuel tanks, it's got crap in it. Yeah, he did, but it's come back again, so he's replacing the tank now. He sent measurements off, but I don't think he'll be out until he gets that fixed now. Yeah. Yeah. 
going out and the live boat heading out so they're creating a massive wait for us just as we enter the harbour safe water so i'm going to try and keep us pointing straight towards the wake so we don't have to deal with it there's a little fishing boat coming in and we have a sailboat to our right but we're just going to uh poot along through turn my thrusters on just in case because there is quite a strong crosswind as we enter the lock so I'm going to go through this probably a little bit faster than most people would have liked, just because of the wind. Here we've got the wake of those two of the live ship, my guard and the uh, oh, RNLI and the uh, Sea Cat. They do create quite a lot of wake, look. Five days, it's too small for Yeah. So it's too surprisingly large. That's a little Rodman or something, that one. Yeah, so I'll go into the locks and through fairly rapidly, and then once we're in the fish dock itself, I'll slow down. I have a yellow bowed ship that I saw as we were coming in. He's, he's docked, it's a fishing boat. Fish dock, fish dock, it's blue by blue, over. Fish stop. Fish stop, Blue Bow, just making our way towards the base and fish to come through, over. Yeah, come through. Blue Bow, Roger. Wild Rose, fish stop. Fish stop, Wild Rose, go ahead, over. Yeah, when you come in the lot, you'll just see a guard vessel just going up to the fuel there from the fish market, so just watch through. Fish stop, Wild Rose, understood, thank you, out. That pigeon almost took itself out. <laughs> ah, this guard, it's not a trawler, look. He's going to a few birds there, he was just saying. <laughs> Mile Rose, when he stopped, there's a five knot speed limit in the dock. You hell of a bloody motion you've left behind you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, I forgot to slow down. Complaining about the wake. <laughs> yeah. 
Lots of waves actually. Do you want to get out and put fenders out? So almost like I know what I'm doing. Play up to the field but no fucking around. And actually the wind in here is um Fish shot, fish shot, blue bell, blue bell, that's me clear of the base over. Okay, blue bell. He's much lower, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shut off now and we're gonna get some fuel. That's it, that's how I run out and uh Hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, I've left it mostly unedited because I just wanted you to hear us talking shit, see what we do when we go out and about. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the relaxing scenery and the views, and uh, we'll see you all later. Take care. Bye bye.